Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. I'm so excited today to be joined by the fantastic Justin Chu Carey to talk all about his series Black Summer. And the first thing that I wanted to dive into talking about is your character development process this season compared to the first one. Because when you were cast in the show, it was really only a couple of weeks before you went into filming. So you very much had to intrinsically feel out who Spears was as a character. And so going into this season and having the gift of a little bit more time with the scripts, what was important to you to use that time for? And what were some of the details that you wanted to finesse and evolve in him before you went onto set? Yeah, um, that's... Uh done your homework because yeah it was yeah the first season was was a whirlwind you know it's like you, you booked the job and then like two weeks later I was like on set you know um acting with Jamie King you know <laughs> and uh and yeah so you didn't really have I didn't have that much time to find the character you know um I did as much as I could in in that sort of frame but it's been like almost two years since we uh shot the first season so uh, and I knew I, I knew we were going to get a second season. So Spears has just been kind of like floating around in my mind. I've just been thinking about, you know, who he is, where he comes from, um, even just like how he moves. Um, physicality is very important to me as an actor and just like where a person leads from, whether their shoulders or their chest or their head. Um, and uh, and so this season, you know, I, I actually had a lot of time. Um, one, you know, when we got greenlit, the the um, showrunner sent me a few of the scripts. And so I got to see where we were going. He talked to me about where he wanted to take the character. Um, and, uh, you know, I immediately, I, I journal a lot. So I like to journal as the character and, uh, it, you know, and it's almost, it's weird. It, it, it might sound like a kind of, you know, very uh, spiritual, <laughs> I don't know, uh, thing, but it's, it's the character will tell you who they are sometimes you know i like i it's weird like when you just let your mind roam it, it they kind of just like guide your hand to to uh who they are what their past was um at least i like to think it <laughs> that way um and so i did a lot of journaling this season leading up to it just like you know from the beginning i you know all the way from the time he was his earliest memories all the way through the first season and what's been happening in the six months since the first season um and yeah and then you know then COVID hit so we got to set and I was like a day away from shooting my first scene for second season and then COVID hit we got shut down for six months so then I had another six months of kind of just like living with it which was amazing you know you always hear about uh, I've always heard about character or like character actors who like had a whole year like Daniel Day-Lewis has a whole year to prepare for something and I was like it's a year <laughs> you know I was like yeah you should be good if you had a whole year you know uh but this this time I had like pretty much a year to like sit with all the scripts and and you know so when I came to set I was I was ready to go and I love the journaling being such a huge part of your process especially because the first season was very intentionally not about giving you exposition and sure. backstory to these characters it was we're meeting them in this in the moment and this is who they are under these circumstances in this situation mm -hmm. and i know that when you spoke with the creative team that they really gave you the freedom to fill in those gaps but now in this season we're getting actually a fair amount of backstory and certain mm -hmm. really pivotal details to him as a character so how did that fit into the way that you had already been mapping him out as a character and then where you had to think about taking him with his history in mind. I hit the delete button a few times. <laughs> Scratch things out. I was like, I mean, but really though, uh, you know, like I, I had his story that I kind of came up with and and then they gave me details and I'm like, oh, well, and then I just kind of like, you know, cut and paste some things, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then I do go, and I don't just, I don't just write it, then I go back and read it. So even though I incorporated some of the uh, new details that I got from from the writers, um, you know, I go, when, when I went back and read it all, like it kind of, it was all a cohesive thing. So I, I at least knew, you know, where I was and what I was doing. Yeah. And there's a really interesting trajectory of scenes in which you're actually by yourself with none of the other characters for a period yeah. of time. And performance wise, that's really fascinating to step into a realm like that, especially with the way that the show films and allows it to kind of sit, you know, that camera's following you for minutes on end for a singular scene at any mm -hmm. point. 
And so did you find that you were just leaning very heavily on everything that you'd been building in him, in him as a character up until that point to really bring forth such an internalized performance for those moments? Uh, I mean, absolutely. You know, I mean, I mean, I feel like it's common to say, but, you know, the more prepared you are, the better you're going to be and the, uh, you know, the less nervous you're going to be about what you're doing and, um, and having so much time and being able to prepare for so long, you know, um, and even just now having lived with Spears for like two years, it, it, I leaned heavily on all the preparation um, for, especially for episode five, which is where I'm kind of like by myself the whole time. So, yeah. And you mentioned before how physicality is such an important part of a character for you. And in particular with Spears, you know, in this season as well, it's like there's a sense of just physical fatigue and exhaustion. We see him when he's injured, but we also know that over the time that he's been battling all of this with everyone else, this isn't his first injury either. So there's just a lot of wear and tear on his body. And then that added to the scope of navigating everything through winter. How did that really change the physicality of him as a character for you this season? Which part, the, the winter or, or the all? The winter and just kind of like the injury and the fatigue of everything that he's been going through and the wear and tear on his body. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, physicality, you know, when when hopefully done right, you know, it's uh, it can make for a lot less acting, <laughs> you know, and that's what you're always going for, right? Like you don't ever want to feel like you're acting. Um, and, you know, having the injury that I have throughout most of the season and, um, and then, and even just the clothes, like we're, we're in so many layers. I have like five layers of, of clothing that I actually needed because we were in Calgary, Canada in the middle of winter. It's, you know, negative 10 degrees and, and I'm a Cali dude. So <laughs> like I'm born and raised in Cali. Uh, so I don't know that kind of weather, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was really the, the first time I had been in negative anything. Um, so you know, those layers helped and then, and then feeling that cold, um, it just, like, I didn't even have to think about it. I didn't have to think about like what I'm doing. I was actually, <laughs> you know, holding myself cause I was cold and, and, uh, and just the weight of the clothes, you know, and like kind of, kind of trying to trudge through the snow and the weight of the boots, you know, it, it all just kind of informs what your body's doing just even unconsciously. It just, it just happens, which is, ideal when you're acting <laughs> and the more time you spend on the show the more you're working on stunt work and fight sequences as well um and so how is how has that evolved in terms of your collaboration with the stunt team but also what you feel that you're able to bring forth within those types of scenes with your skill set and stunt work at this point from doing so much of it on the show right i mean you know the funny thing is this this season wasn't there wasn't as many stunts for me this season um it was this season is a lot more cerebral than the the first the first season this this season uh, everybody but especially Spears is really going through it <laughs> you know mentally. I mean we're six months into the apocalypse and that's the thing I love about the show right it's is that it's um they're always searching for like the realism of it and and realistically if you've been surviving for six months day in and day out in a zombie apocalypse you are going to be uh traumatized <laughs> and and I mentally fatigued to say the least you know so that's what we were exploring and um so I think a lot of yeah there wasn't as much stunt work this season and uh and some of like the big falls like there's some huge falls down like mountains and stuff I left I left that to the the professionals, the pros. <laughs> and it's like, you can fall down the mountain. I'm not falling down the mountain. <laughs> like, unless there's a zombie there, I, I don't need to be there. <laughs> yeah, I don't even, I don't even fall down. It's like, like this one guy, I mean, I'm telling you, it was this, I, I don't even know how long it, was, it had to be, at least be 100 yards, like just tumbling down this mountain. That's me. But it, like, and he did like 10 takes of it. Uh, like I hats off to those guys. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> and I love in watching the show how long it allows the scenes to be. And it sounds like they're within the casting that it was very intentional to hire a lot of actors with theater experience with yeah. that in mind. And so how does that feed into the process of how you're all building and constructing scenes and really figuring out what the beats and what the arcs of a moment are going to be, knowing that you're going to go into these very long immersive takes with each other? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I actually didn't know that. And 
um, until after we were finished shooting season one, actually at the, at the premiere of season one, the showrunner, you know, just happened to mention, it's like, oh yeah, I was looking for people with theater experience. And we are like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, I didn't, we didn't realize that that was, you know, some, a requirement or, or something that he had in mind as he was casting and, and, but it made sense and, and it worked because especially the first season when I was working with people, with people more, <laughs> like in the cast more, uh, you know, the long scenes, it, it just, when you have theater experience, it's, it's almost like endurance training, right? Like, because film is almost film and TV is like a sprint. And I, it's, at least how, this is how I look at it. It's like a sprint and, and then theater is like, the, like a marathon, right? And you're, you're on stage for sometimes two hours. And so having that background really just allowed us to, to stay in it, you know, the entire time. Um, this season I'm working with, uh, in that episode where I'm by myself, uh, there's one other actor who's one of my really close friends, Bashir Sylvain, um, who happened to get cast. And, uh, and we've we've done actually a three man play together, um, and so there's this there's one scene where we're by the fire pit, and it's it's like a I don't know maybe like a five minute long scene, six minute long scene, and we just did it all in one take. You know, I mean, we did multiple takes, but you know, we did the whole thing just you know like it was like a like a theater play, and and that's what the the director wanted. He wanted it to feel like that. And that scene between the two of you and all of those moments actually paired up are really astounding in terms of the trajectory that you take these two characters on. And for Spears, you know, he has to go through such so many different spaces in terms of initially it's there's a stranger. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to engage with anyone because look what happens when I do. And then he gradually lets him in. And then there's kind of like a casualness and almost a little bit of frivolity that we haven't really seen yet. And then things really shift and turn again in terms of the emotional scope as their history with each other comes to the foreground. Mm -hmm. And it's also really great watching Spears suddenly remember things from his past that he's probably for survivalism not allowed himself to go there for so long right. and so how did the two of you map out what all those different tones and flows were going to be throughout the scene and and particularly in terms of the emotional trajectory between these two characters as they reveal their cards to each other right i mean i think like i said Bashir sylvain he's one of my close friends you know so we which is that's part of the reason i think uh our showrunner wanted to hire him was because we have this we already have this rapport and he wanted somebody that i was going to play off of really well and um you know we've been we've done a, a couple plays together we've we've taken acting classes together you know uh, that's how we met you know years ago and so we're really familiar with each other and we have like a, a really strong shorthand um so I don't know, we didn't do so much mapping. I think we're, and again, we also had so much time to prepare, right? So we had, you know, it was like, the script was like, we knew it, we knew every single line of each other's line. We knew the stage directions. We knew, you know, we like knew the thing, like the ABCs, you know? And uh, so we were fans of just, we're playing in the moment, you know? And cause the, the story is there. You know, if we play each moment truthfully and if we're really listening to each other and having that ping pong back and forth with each other, we're, you know, the, the story is going to tell itself. It's, I mean, it was written so beautifully and so, uh, um, and so specifically that we play those specific moments, we were confident that the story was going to, was going to um, be there. I mean, we did have a conversation with each other and, you know, we talked about, you know, what these guys' past were with each other, you know, who they were to each other. Um, but other than that, I, we didn't really kind of go through and map every, every point, you know? Yeah. And in working on this show, is it a different style of relationship that you end up having with your directors and with the camera department because of how it's filmed? Because mm -hmm. what's really fascinating is when you look at scenes like the one where you're by yourself and you're out in the snow and it's daylight is it looks like there's a lot of freedom of motion within the choreography of a scene. But mm -hmm. then at the same time, when you look at moments like the fire pit scene where it's really just relying on very minimal light and the camera's very close up and trying to make sure that it's captured certain inflections on your face in certain moments within the scene that feels very specific in a different way but both of them feel like very intimate relationships between the actor and between the camera and so has that been a different collaboration that you've had with them on the show yeah I, I, it's funny that you uh 
noticed that. I mean, that's yeah, the, the camera guy, the camera operator, Wes, uh, he is amazing, you know. Uh, and as a dance, we always joke that we're like dancing with each other, and and it's and it's again, it is there's like a freedom we you know he feels me i feel him and we're you know we're constantly kind of just um moving with each other and and anticipating and i think that's something he's wes is amazing at he anticipates our movements and um and knows where we're gonna go and where we're gonna move and so it is especially for those like really long shots you know and and we're moving through the woods or whatever um yeah it's a, it's a dance with with the a camera operator and it's also so interesting character wise to take that concept of who a character is at their core and then to put them in an extreme situation like they're in in the show mm -hmm. and then to think about what that does to their moral compass. And I think Spears is a great example of that where we see him having to recalibrate a lot of times and there's obviously certain things that he does that push him beyond his comfort limit. And so how are you always thinking about the recalibration of what his moral compass is going to be as a character? I don't know if I think about it in terms of moral compass. I think it's, I think of it more as basic instinct. You know, I think when, you know, you're put in a situation of fight or flight, you know, it's everything's pretty unconscious and your body's going to do what it's going to do and your mind's going to go where it's going to go just to survive, you know? And so I think it's, a, you know basic acting what do you want and i think you know so much of the shows what i want is to live <laughs> you know and so you know the the more the moral compass that we have in civil society is 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 taught right especially i have a four-year-old i'm always like it's like oh man i really got to teach you these <laughs> like you know that that's inappropriate don't do that you know so but that's all learned right but i think that goes out the window when you're surviving for your life you know especially if it's every single day for the last six months yeah. and with the scripts and relationships there's also just as many moments about nothing being said as there are within the moments of dialogue and particularly when we look at the dynamic that you've developed with jamie king on the show you know your characters have such an intrinsic communication with each yeah. other at this point mm -hmm. having gone from complete strangers to this trust but they still have a little bit of a wall up against each other but then they can also communicate and say things to each other with just the glance of an eye um, and is that something that has just seamlessly developed between the two of you because of the time that you spent together and the way that you've worked together filming or are you ever thinking about the moments in between and what you want those to look like yeah you, you know that that actually came pretty naturally it wasn't something that was planned and i think it's a testament to jamie for sure um but also a testament to our kind of like natural chemistry that we had and and we we didn't meet it until the first shot of of uh, Black Summer season one that we had together. The first scene we did that we met <laughs> right before the scene. <laughs> and, um, but it was, a, it was one of those things of an instant click, you know, we, we, we took a moment and said hello. And, and Jamie's one of those people who she'll look into your eyes and, you know, search your soul a little bit. <laughs> and, but it was wonderful and we, we clicked. And, um, and from that point on, we kind of just, it, we didn't even talk about it, but it just kind of always naturally happened. We check in with each other uh, in the scene, like you said, just with the glance of, you know, uh, with our eyes and and um, make sure we're on the same page as we're as we're trying to like navigate the scene. And the space that you've taken Spears to and the arc that he goes on throughout this season is really phenomenal and so far away from where we first met him, where it was, I'll do anything to survive. And then by the end of season two, he's lost a lot of that fight that he had in him and he's just kind of exhausted by everything. Yeah. And we see the emotional place that that brings him to. And how did you set about you know, bringing him to that space so that once he reaches that culmination, cumulative point that it doesn't feel out of left field and we completely understand having seen everything that he's gone through up until that point how he's reached this space emotionally right i it's a, that's a hard question um i think you know i was what kind of kept rolling through my mind this season was exhaustion you know and i think he he, he had you know i think you're exhausted already 
And then, you know, how sometimes there's that that last thing that happens to you where you're just like, oh, I, you know, it was the, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. Um, and I think when he sustains his injury without giving away too much, you know, it's 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 that it's that that last straw for him. And and now it's just this exhaustive nature. And so I, I just kind of try to put myself in this place of, um, you know, again, backstory of, of six months of survival and how exhausting that would be and no place, no real shelter. And I mean, zombies chasing you every single day, you know, and, and just the wear on the mind of, you know, even as an actor, as Justin, watching these zombies who are in this incredible makeup and it looks so realistic on set, you know, and they're like tearing into people's flesh and stuff. Even just me psychologically watching it and knowing it's fake is still a little disturbing, you know? So I can only imagine, or I tried to imagine what that would be like to see that in real life and, and how, um, you know, fatiguing it would be on the mind, the body and the spirit too, you know, it's, it's breaking the spirit and, and, and playing with the fragility of, of, of all of that. Um, so, so by the time that I got to the end of the season, um, I, I really try to wear all of those experiences. What's really wild as well is when you step back and you realize that an entire season is really just the course of a few days, yeah. you know, that, that entire day where he goes off and then he meets someone and everything that happens following, that's only one night. <laughs> yeah. At the end yeah. Of the day. yeah. And so how is that a really interesting challenge in the way that you have to bring him on these really large arcs, but you also have to think about the fact that not very much time has passed. Right. I mean, I, I, I think, Again, you know, I, I think when you're surviving and I don't know, it feels it feels pretty natural. I think when you're surviving, you know, time flies when you're having fun. And I think it's the reverse, like time moves very slowly when you're, you know, bored or scared or in pain and you want something to be over, you know, it, it lasts a long time. So I, I think um, it was carrying the experience of always of being scared for that long, I think, and being and being this fight or flight for for that long, I think it, I think it it allowed me to feel the arc, you know, in from the beginning of one night to the end of one night, you know, I don't know that was a strange <laughs> answer, but <laughs> no, but it absolutely makes sense. And on a on a separate note, I know that one of the things that you've also been working on recently is developing and producing a show with some other collaborators and as you moved into the space of creating stories, how did you start to think differently about your work as an artist and a storyteller and the type of voice and, and landscape that you wanted to shape within the industry, within the types of stories that you wanted to tell? Right. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because I, you know, I'm, I'm black and Chinese and, uh, and I, I come from, uh, I'm very close to my Chinese family and my black family and, uh, you know, and my parents are happily married, you know, couple from Berkeley. And we have, you know, my, my brother and I have like some pretty unique experiences, I think. And it's funny, it's, it's like one of those things like you always kind of waited for you, like I was waiting for someone to tell the type of stories that looked familiar to me and I never saw it. And then, you know, finally you're like, wait, maybe I'm the person who's supposed to be doing this, <laughs> you know, maybe I, maybe I need to tell my story, you know? Um, and so, yeah, I think I just, I realized that there is this kind of opening of telling this kind of diverse family story that I've experienced in my own life. Well, I'm so excited to see what all of those stories end up looking like. And, you know, watching you on Black Summer has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing all of this with us today. Oh, thank you so much.